Why is it the Passover that becomes the memorial and the foundation? And is it the sacrifice of the innocent? And it's because it's the sacrifice of the lambs and the blood. And so is the idea here that the foundation of the proper state is the voluntary sacrifice of the innocent? Is it's is that what's happening it here? Is, no, I don't think it's, I don't think, I think that we need to see it really in terms of, of Egypt as, as opposites. So you have the end of a world, mm -hmm. Egypt ends, God takes the seeds out of Egypt. We have a new beginning, which is also based on sacrifice. It's based on voluntary sacrifice, but that's the magic of of the, the Passover sacrifice, it's as if, if you're willing to give your firstborn to God, God will give him back to you. That's the surprise of so willing it's sacrifice. Okay, so is it founded on the principle of voluntary sacrifice? I think so. No. You don't oh, think so? You no. don't think so? Okay. I think the plain and obvious thing, this was the night of liberation. Right. I agree with they that. They went out right. that night. But, but there's also a sacrificial no, that's, element. That, that's that's, that's too, in the Passover, how it happened. But the basic thing, and they remember it through history, isn't it, Dennis? They were well, free we that night. Well, we say in our prayers over and over, just as for the Christian, the, the crucifixion and resurrection are the central events, I believe, of Christian theology. The central events of Jewish theology, and I didn't make this up, it is constant in Jewish prayer is creation and exodus. Mm -hmm. if, if you deny either of those, and you're certainly free to, you, you have put yourself outside of Judaism. That, that is the Jewish normative view. Yeah, but, but I think it, it's not necessary. It's not a zero sum game. No, you know, we've exactly. been talking a lot about creation sacrifice. and redemption. These two, these are two sides of the same coin. Just as for Christians, cross and resurrection are two sides of the same coin. So, yeah, but it's 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 a recreation of the world, and yeah, you see right. it, right? Right. So, so it is. But is, yeah. is a in this of life, case, a definitely the giving yeah. up of your first fruits and the giving up of that which is primary to God, and then the surprise of God saying, actually, no you can have it back, mm -hmm. right? And I think that that's definitely part of the, it's part of the story. It's not the only mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, I agree yeah. no, already, right. but no, it's no, part no. of I, I, No, I wouldn't want to make it. The, By the way, do any of you have a reaction, and I'm not, I'm not, you know, urging that there be one, but I, that idea that we Jews have to remember this because God may not intervene again, does that strike you as plausible? Because I well, can just... Well, you do have the mystery in, in the Bible in some sense and maybe in history itself is, well, if God was there so much in the times that are being described, where did he go as time progressed? Right. And that's the deus abscondus problem. And, 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 and I don't know exactly how to contend with that, but, but Do you what think you're saying is God is not involved in Israel, uh, like in the uh, existence I believe, oh, of I Israel. believe in the ultimate sense, there's no question. God, God is uh, constantly the, the, the guardian of Israel. It's, that's repeated. But it's clear that, you know, uh, most people don't know that in six, the 1660s, about the same percentage of Jews in Europe were murdered uh, as were by in the Holocaust, about a third, uh, or well, in two thirds in the case of the Holocaust, I believe, but one third in the Chmielnitsky pogroms in, in Ukraine and slash Poland. Uh, and uh, it, God saves the Jewish people, but but not the Jews. And, and that, that, by the way, I have comfort in that. I don't expect to be individually saved. I, but I just want to note that religious Jews in the death camps celebrated to the best of their ability the Seder. So here they are uh, facing gas chambers and saying, thank you for saving us. We remember you saved us from, from Pharaoh. That's an incredible thing. And that's why I say it gives... It gives comfort, even though I'm not being saved now, but I know you intervened well, it, on I our behalf. It, I think it makes sense for people to believe in the fundamental ascendance of the spirit that leads us from slavery under all conditions. Because to, to not have faith in that is really, in some sense, to lose faith in life itself. And so that would even be, if you're in, in the situation of a camp, what do you have to have faith in? Well, in some sense, just to live, and I think this is something Solzhenitsyn observed too, to just to live under those conditions, you still have to believe in the ascendancy, the ultimate ascendancy ultimate. of the spirit that calls men, mankind out of tyranny. And isn't it where the story picks up? Because God existed before the Jews were enslaved in Egypt. They existed when all the firstborn were killed, right? 
And so it sort of depends where where it is, because you could say to them then when they were in Egypt before God said, I've heard I've heard the cries of my people, it's sort of the same position, right? Mm -hmm. So that God it's wasn't, not that wasn't, God wasn't there, right? right so we right. can Exactly correct. But, okay. Okay. So I would like to point out that we've got through one one verse so far. <laughs> Probably <laughs> proceed. Well, it was a biggie. So, it, was it was a big a one. It was okay. a big one. <laughs> we need to get Shapiro in here reading. <laughs> seven, yeah. So, seven days. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. And in the first day there shall be an holy convocation, and in the seventh day there shall be an holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat. That may that only may done of, be done of you. It's another application of a set of laws here and, and an establishing set of principles. And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for in this selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. That's to your point with regard to freedom. Therefore, shall you observe this day in your generations by an ordinance, an interesting eh? ordinance, because an ordinance is something that, that ordinates. It's like a coordinate. It's like a, it's an establishing system by an ordinance forever. In the first month, on the 14th, month, 14th day of the month even, at even, Ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month at even. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses, for whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. Ye shall eat nothing leavened. In all your habitations shall ye eat unleavened bread. It's very much emphasized there, this, this structure of rules. Well, then, it's not called Passover in the, in the Torah. It's called the, ho the holiday of matzahs, of unleavened bread. Chag mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And did, do you think we analyzed the motif of unleavened, unleavened bread I think sufficiently we did, yeah. before? By okay. the way, I will, I will get a ski jet. Is that what it's called? Just I will ski. buy one for anyone who could name all the holidays of the Torah. <laughs> now, is, does this include all the people who are listening? <laughs> <laughs> Careful what send you in, offer. Send in your responses. <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. Could you think you could? It's an interesting question. And by the way, there are seven. Again, seven. Well, I can't. Come on, Greg. Oh, don't let us down. I'm, 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 I'm going to kick this to Oz. <laughs> no, I have to. <laughs> You've got us, Dennis. But the vast majority of Jews couldn't do. They would. They would. Because one is very obscure, and I have a. Fun, all right, so Shabbat. Rosh Hashanah, which is called the day of, of, uh, of trumpets, Yom Kippur, Passover, Pentecost, Shavuot, Tabernacle, Sukkot, uh, and then the seventh, which is the, the one that trips up everybody, including most Jews, called Shmini Atzeret. It's his own holiday. It's the, after the seven days of tabernacles is the eighth day. Shmini means eighth. Atzeret is convocation meeting. It is the only holiday that has no purpose other than having a good time. <laughs> it, it doesn't commemorate anything. It is a fascinating thing. So I don't I don't work on Jewish holidays that are in the Torah. I, I, that's so. I remember uh, many of you know uh, Larry Elder, who the, the, who ran you know for for governor uh, in California, a dear friend of mine. So we used to be on the same station in Los Angeles. And I would be on in the afternoon, and he would follow me in his talk show. And he, so I said, so Larry, I just want you to know I won't be on tomorrow. Oh, he goes, why? I said, I, well, you know, I don't broadcast on Jewish holidays. And he goes, which holiday is it? And I go, Shmini Atzeret. And the guy was convinced I made it up to take the day off. <laughs>